Hey folks, welcome to another custom lesson. This one's been requested by Flo. I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name because I'm going to suck at it. In any case, this person wanted to know, first of all, am I going to put these weapon showcases, these build custom lessons, whatever you want to call them, am I going to put them on YouTube? And as you can see, the answer is yes. So definitely provide me your input and put it in the same format if you can as this person has. So this person requested that I use sword and odachi and then you, so you can see the soul cores on the guardian spirits and i will later be fighting the first samurai version of otakimaru so let's get on to the soul cores in question so let's start with yumehame i was again tasked with messing with the specific soul cores and so i'll talk about what i think could be done to improve this because yes there is room for improvement here but again kasha was requested I would advise maxing the rank out because you can get that sweet life drain yokai ability hit. Now as for the other special effects, well, pick whatever you want. I just happen to have extended yokai shift and it's just coincidental that it's going to be on Yumehame. And super efficient yokai abilities, which is great, but I didn't even max it out. I think it goes up to like 6-7%. And the reason I didn't pick like my usual rank 30 ones is because I wanted to kind of steer away from having expensive anima bonus requirements. I just wanted to be like, you take Kasha, one that seems reasonable, and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you're not familiar with Kasha, Kasha is a phenomenally powerful soul core with very, with downsides that players honestly just ignore because they are pretty much ignorable. Kasha does a whopping amount of damage. It hits all sorts of targets, is right to inflict scorch upon enemies, and generally just destroys everything. The downsides that it does have, aside from just uh, starting animation time, which you're going to start to see here. Um, believe it or not, the whip part that you saw earlier, that can actually hit targets too. But the starting animation overall is a little long, and while Kasha is out, you cannot use other yokai abilities. Uh, in addition, Kasha can sometimes just like veer off targets, and as you can see, the path... Oops. As you can now see, the path isn't exactly like straight. It just kind of does what it wants and follows the target and hits them. And sometimes it just can like bounce off corners. So it can be a little weird, but it's still remarkably powerful even after the nerfs. That's right. The post nerf version is still ridiculously powerful. So next, let's get to Namahage. Namahage doesn't matter what soul core rank you have it unless you're really attached to the anima bonuses or special other special effects. Uh, this soul core is really good as a gap closer specifically against enemies that are low on key or against yokai that have no key and you need to deplete their max key. It's really really good for that so I would recommend you use it for that purpose. But of course against humans you can just stagger them a bunch but there is a bit of a downtime which I'll showcase. And so that's why I don't use it specifically just as like, hey, I want to stagger an enemy repeatedly because they can kind of break out of stuff towards the end. Last but not least was the Infernal Oni B. This is the one of the three soul cores on this that I'd also, I would say, rank up the most simply because you want to boost this anima bonus elemental attack. It's so good. Reason being, this isn't based on, oh, I've inflicted Scorch. It's just, did you inflict fire damage at all? And since you're going to have fire damage in the first place from, say, Kasha or Infernal Oni B and whatnot, you're going to get some anima back, which does help. And it's great. The only stat that I personally cared on this was Yokai Ability Key Pulse. The fact that there's extended Yokai Shift is coincidental, and it's not really necessary on Yumihame because you already have an extra 20%. So, yeah, Yokai Ability Key Pulse, generally good anima bonuses, didn't even rank them that much, and we're good to go. So that will be, oh last thing I want to mention about Infernal Oni B, this will be your de facto quick cancel core. It is really good and just makes weapon play feel that much better. Next up we're going with Haktaku. So starting with the soul cores that were requested, Itsumare. This is a soul core that I find gets mostly misunderstood. It is really good for hitting multiple targets, clearing groups and whatnot. But there is an interaction that I don't see get played up enough simply because it's not readily apparent at first. And that is what is suggested on the tooltip. Cause all instances of the yokai realm around you to explode. So I have personally done this and it is absolutely hilarious. Let a bunch of enemies generate their own yokai realms, like deplete their key, and then they all wake back up like a bunch of gaki or something. Pull them all together in, in like five or six yokai realms, whatever, and then just like blow them all up with Itsumare. It's devastating. Itsumare's power 
is not specifically noticeable if you just do it naturally as is shown here. But again, if enemies have their own instances of Yokai Realm, you will blow all of them up and it's crazy. Even just an extra instance of a Yokai Realm makes a huge difference, which is why Itsumate is absolutely nutty. Straight up, it is ridiculous. Uh, one thing of note when it comes to Yokai Realms, your the instances of Yokai Realm that you generate through effects, whether it is whether it's through the Owl Soul Core or through like pots, the explosions from those apparently don't do as much damage as ones that enemies naturally just generate. So uh, wake up Yokai Realms from various enemies like Gaki, use those and blow them up. Uh, Nui generates a ton of Yokai Realms with a variety of its attacks, especially in the Dark Realm. So use those blow it up it's it's ridiculous uh, in fact itsumare against itsumare is actually pretty hilarious because you know he generates a ton of soul uh, of yokai realms blow all those up and it's not only will you tank your frame rate but you'll also destroy everything on screen it is a great time this is one of the three soul cores on here that i would advise boosting up its rank simply because anima bonus purification is awesome I think this goes up to like 1 or 1.2 or something, but that makes a huge difference against the Yokai. And it's a reliable source of anima that you can get, which is really, really good. Also, if you're a fan of corrupted weapons, you're going to like the corrupted accumulation anyway. These stats I don't really care for. They're just, they just happen to be there. Next up, let's talk about Ancient Neo Tengu, which I don't really get seen used too often. I don't know if that made sense. I don't see people use it that often. This core I also find is misunderstood. While its damage output isn't anything impressive, what is impressive is its ability to break key. It is really good against enemies that block, which I don't think I'll be able to showcase here in the dojo too well. But it is, it's not the best against multiple enemies. I mean, it's okay, but when you have all three of these clones attack like one target who's blocking, their key gets obliterated. So. Take for instance, say Saito Toshimitsu, you know, everyone's favorite block spammer. Yeah, throw this out on him when he starts blocking. Make sure you're a little distance away as is suggested here. And then watch his key basically go from 100 to like zero. And it's just silly. It's it's really, really powerful. So you got something for blocking enemies and you got all sorts of tools for just enemies that aren't blocking. And so this is really, really good. It's a great summon core. Last but not least, I picked Suiki since I had freedom here. Most important stat for me was the Yokai ability Key Pulse. I probably just boosted the rank. Uh, enemy saturated, great. I didn't really care about that. I just wanted the Yokai ability Key Pulse, and I think this was like one of the better Suikis I had. It, you don't need to have this rank that highly. So Suiki, the reason I picked this was because I wanted to help cover more elements. So we already have Fire here with Kasha and Infernal Oni B. Uh, we have two lightning guardian spirits and so i've got two out of the five elements we've got corruption here and i was like you know what i want an ability that can let me move around and inflicts water which is suiki which is perfect suiki is really awesome a big favorite maybe the ability isn't particularly inspiring but yeah you can avoid all sorts of stuff with this just move around and inflict a lot of water damage as well so it's really great to help you clinch that confusion when you need it so yeah let's just showcase these soul cores in action before i work with weapon based play oops and there's a the correct spot let's see if i can showcase neo tengu i don't necessarily think i'll be able to i'll try like a few times when you use neo tengu keep a little distance see it, otherwise it, it it won't work as well as you might like but it's still inflicting a reasonable amount of key damage. So it's good as a summon core. Alright, I'll show it one more time. Not too bad, huh? It's really good for like zero key combos or just getting an enemy to zero key in the first place. Oh, now you block. There you go, perfect. I didn't get to showcase it too much, but you, you heard and hopefully saw the amount of break damage it did against that blocking opponent. Sometimes you can break horns with it because there's like a lot of martial arts uh, abilities going on with Ancient Neo Tengu. You see like that? That's pretty decent. So think of it best used to destroy enemies who are blocking. All right, now it's a mod power. Let's showcase this. Ah, oh, 
moved out of the realm. So Itsumate does require a bit of positioning, so you need to kind of pay attention to it. But it's basically something, if you can pull it off, it's remarkable. Here's base damage. Not too shabby. Alright. Try it now. Not bad! Alright. Let me showcase what I think is a reliable time to pull it off. Alright. So I'm gonna break his horn first, get him out of key. Of course. Alright, let's go. So when you use Itsumate, just back away a little bit. Should explode twice, right? Yeah, you saw it explode twice. Pretty safe, and I did a pretty good amount of damage. Alright, let's let his key come back. Alright, let's try again. Keep a little distance. That's a pretty good amount of damage. All things considered. And it just gets magnified even further the more yokai realms there are. You'll be surprised at its damage output. I don't actually think the dojo is showcasing just how powerful it can be. I've just been blown away by its damage output. Alright, and then Suiki is just, hey, I don't want to deal with you. Let's get confusion. Alright, I can si I can swing around in a circle and do what I'd like. So it's pretty wild. Yeah, you can just literally use it to move around. Alright, I'm pretty sure he's going to die now. Oh, he dodged, but even just the one hit blew him to smithereens, so you have a huge potential of damage output. Uh, with these other soul cores, I've talked about them before, but let's just showcase some stuff. Uh, and starting with Kasha. Kasha, go do your thing, honey. Go, go kill him. Go do the things. Like, just have the health with Kasha, thank you. And he's gonna burn. Um, Namahage, on the other hand, Great for zero key to fully out of max key pressure. That was really good for that. That's what I would recommend it for. And then last but not least, we've got Oni B. Oh, come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Let's do Tiger's Blade. So it can be pretty rad. Um, you can do. St I'll showcase some weapon combos in a bit. Oh, whatever. It also does a reasonable amount of key damage. So definitely use it for that purpose. So yeah, it can just feel like you have a seamless transition of weapon-based play. So it can be pretty fun. Let's showcase a couple of things involving the weapons and the soul cores all put together. So here, check this out. Just the soul cores with weapons, nothing too fancy. Namahage, pretty decent. But you saw there's a bit of downtime, so if that opponent hadn't lost all their key, it would have been a little trickier to work with. So here I'll just showcase Namahage on its own. Ow! That hurt. Alright, let's try again. Okay, I need you to generate more key. Or not! You're right! That was awesome though. Zero key combo potential versus... Ooh, I'm a little vulnerable. And that's no fun. So yeah, there's a difference between using it to keep an enemy at zero key for zero key combos versus just trying to deplete their key. And Namahage isn't the best for that. And... ah, See, it's not the best in key damage. It's okay. But it's pretty good for breaking enemy key, which hopefully I showcased. So let's show some things that you can do that I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy. So I know you guys like juggling, so let's just showcase a juggle thing that I've been messing around with. I like the likelihood of me pulling this off in normal combat is gonna be pretty low, but I figured you guys like to see it. Oh come on, get up! No, up you get. No, dude, <laughs> this is silly. All right, this should work. No, no, I was using the wrong core. <laughs> I was meant to do that with Suiki. I'm sorry, guys. Come on, up you get. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Take a bath. So yeah, you can do fun stuff like that. So retrograde flow, make sure that portion of the ability actually depletes their key. 
Uh, so here, I'll just showcase like another little extension you can do. Maybe a little tricky, mind me. M mind you. Come on, let's get that key down. It's 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 funnier in my opinion with Suiki. Uh, as opposed to trying to do anything before that. But yeah, you can keep them in the air a little bit with Suiki, which can be pretty fun while you regenerate your key at the expense of Anima. Uh, another good time, in my opinion, to use uh, Itsumare is actually against humans is right after you get the grapple off. It can be pretty devastating. And this works against bosses uh, pretty handily. Right after you do a grapple, just throw out Itsumare, they usually get hit by it. Uh, one thing I actually completely forgot to uh, mention is just the relative downtime of each of the soul cores. Sorry about that, I meant to do that earlier. So let's see the soonest I can block with each of the cores, starting with Itsumare. It's actually sooner than the explosion. So you, you'd be surprised what you can pull off. Ancient Neo Tengu takes a little bit of time but not too shabby. A little bit of time in Ancient Neo Tengu. I believe Suiki is rather quick. Yeah, Suiki is like near instant. So you can do a lot of fun things like that, for example. Uh, one thing with Suiki as well is as long as you're holding down the abilities I am, you're good to go. Or if you just don't and just move the stick and then you can just like let go of the stick and you'll stop it. But yeah, you can buffer inputs pretty quickly. Pasha is going to be a little different. You gotta wait a bit, so this is one you gotta plan out. And you can't use soul cores unless it's finished. Oni B is so fast you probably won't even notice. Most people don't even care about Oni B whatsoever. Um, Namahage being a long animation does take some time. So bear that in mind. So you have some potential for some really quick gameplay. But let's get on to Yokai Shift combos and then I'll just show you the whole package. So let's start with Yumehame, things you can do. Now because we're both in we're we have two phantom forms, we just need to pay attention to the fact that there are some things we will never be able to counter. Courtesy of like brute guardian spirit and whatnot, or feral. Alright, let's go to Yokai Shift. Throw out Yumehame. I would advise not using Kasha right away, going for the quick inflict. I would only advise using Kasha when you have ample amount of time and you are comfortable, say, just doing a bunch of normal attacks while you go in. Also, one thing I don't think I've ever mentioned with Phantom, it's like super niche. But you like teleport in, and if you do key pulse, you'll kind of like move away a little bit, which can be handy for Oni B. Just something I thought I'd throw in there. When it comes to Haktaku, I actually have a lot of fun with this. So, what you can do is quite thematic. You can Guardian Spirit into Itsumare. And you can blow stuff up, as you saw there. So, yeah. I specifically like doing this. Because there's basically two massive elemental explosions. Of course, this tracks, and that can be pretty rad, too. I want to showcase it, because I just like doing it a lot. It just feels so thematic. Also, you got City Key, which can always be a lot of fun. City Key is pretty cool, too. So, you, you'll have a lot of fun uh, messing around with these Yokai ships, despite the fact that you can't really tap into different forms. So, let's just showcase the whole package before I finish up here. Just a couple of things to give you ideas. So, let's see what I like to do. Alright, let's go. Oh, you missed. Still dead. It works, believe it or not, it works better on bosses than this little freak in the dojo. Move around. Move around again. Ooh, that was sick, wasn't it? Just nailed it right in time. So think about that. Try elemental confusion. <laughs> Into <laughs> it's a mod grapple. It's pretty freaking dirty. So I'm sure you'll have a lot of time. 
Uh, one last thing I should mention, and I know I've been a little all over the place this lesson, is you can take advantage of the sheet swaps, but I don't find them too specifically valuable unless you're going from Odachi to Sword as opposed to Sword to Odachi. I find that if I want to go from Sword to Odachi, then I'll usually just do Flash Attack into Oni B and then go from there. It feels pretty seamless. Whereas, say, uh, if I want to do Odachi attacks and the Sword attacks, the sheet swaps works pretty well. So that's just my opinion about that. And you'll just see all sorts of things that you can work with. In any case, I think that's enough of a lecture. Let's just showcase this action, this in action against the Otake Maru from the first Samurai DLC. I will see you guys in a bit. All right, let's go showcase some of the gameplay that is possible with this. I'll try to talk you through my thought process as usual and give up pointers so when things could go better. So let's showcase it Itsumate right away and boom, goodbye Gaki. I only wish I could have brought both Gaki in and that would have been awesome. And let's see what I'm gonna try to do. I believe I'm gonna try to just kill the Gakis quickly because I want to focus on Kanaki Gigi, which is correct. Throw out Kasha, let Kasha do the work. And then on to this big baby boy. So breaking the horn is quite difficult, but gives you a lot of downtime. Now what I was trying to showcase is the fact that you can actually bolt and bore this enemy uh, when it does the roll. I, I would learn this from the YouTuber Kagera Simaru, so thank you once again for that. And I was just fishing for that fairy a bit, but otherwise I'm like, yeah, I just want to murder you, destroy your key. And so, yeah, the, that is dead. It's pretty much dead. When you have access to a couple elements, it's a pretty good time. Now with these fire Oni B, they're annoying, so let's just kill them as quickly as possible. And onto the cart. So if you don't know how to deal with the cart, I'll kind of just talk you, oops, I got exploded. I'll talk you through the cart thinking process. So there are three different faces, and as you can see, there are different horn spots to break, and each of the faces does a different move. So I'm actually anticipating that this one will do a certain burst attack and it switched faces now it's brought the mouth version and this one generally breeds corrupted breath but i'm not really giving it a break by inflicting confusion i'm surprised i haven't switched to sui key oh no, didn't need to it looks like i used namahage to get its key out and then now i just decide to blow it up with some elemental pressure it was a little inefficient but that's okay also, anytime I purify a Yokai Realm, I'll switch back to Hakutaku, which has a Sumare on it, um, and then just get some extra anima back. Right now, I want to make sure that... Oh yeah, I screwed this up pretty badly. Uh, the Underworld Soldier grapple, for whatever reason, still throws me off, so I, I just mistimed it, but that's okay. So, back to the course of action. It's just depleting key, getting it confused, and yeah, it's dead. So, pretty awesome. Next is the big bad boy Itsumare itself. This enemy is one that you, you should never underestimate no matter what. And so the idea with Itsumare, and of course I'll have a guide associated with this, is to stay close to him, as scary as that is, so that you can punish things like that grab. I was far away, so I couldn't really punish it. He has a weak spot on his chest, and so I generally want to hit that. And right now I'm using as many different pressure plays as possible. Let's see if I can break his chest there. Yup, and that's my reward for being confident enough to stay close to him. You can break his chest, inflict a lot of max key damage, and get him ready for a grapple state. It's hard to inflict certain elements on him. For whatever reason, I can inflict corruption or purity on him, but fire is just is not well advised. Here I need to make sure that I'm constantly purifying the yokai realms. And yeah, play evasively. I gotta stay close to him so that I can break his break his chest, but other than that, game plan is the same, stay close to him, dispel those yokai pools, uh, I didn't do it too well that time, but I got a good amount of damage on him. So yeah, <laughs> this is a scary enemy, there's no other way to put it, it's just straight up. Make sure you get rid of those yokai realms as quickly as you can. I use Suiki as a quick purifier, I could have used other options, but you also want to make sure that you don't uh, stagger him while he is just stuck in that kind of recovery animation and that that would be a mistake again I'll cover more details about this in the guide and now I've kind of screwed up So I need to like reset sort of my momentum and so I'm just making sure to try to find an opening 
cleaning those yokai realms and then hitting him when he has a bit of downtime. Here I'm going for another chest break. It didn't work because my angle was a little off, but overall I'm not having as much trouble as say others may have. I got a little lucky because those pots broke altogether, and then now I transition from Nalahage into Yokai Shift. I'm going to be aware of his wake up, and so yeah, now I'm just gonna make sure to murder this this big old bird. All right, let's see. Can I can I break the horn there? Oh, I just straight up killed him because Kasha does Kasha things. <laughs> In any case, it's time now for Big Otake Maru, who is decidedly very difficult. So Kasha is my main damage dealer, as you can see here, and my objective is going to be to remove the curse. As with the normal version of Otake Maru, your, your best bet is going to be to try to stay behind him because he does a lot of crazy fast attacks. So you're going to see me circle strafing him, trying to get behind him so that I am not privy to any of his crazy animations. Sometimes I will get hit, and so I just need to make sure to just stay away. Well, Takimaru does have a downside of sticking to some rather long animations, so if you're comfortable with avoiding them, you can get some pretty big punishes. And it's, so it's really not too bad, and you'll see me try to take advantage of them as best as I can. Here I'm trying to get a confusion proc on him so I can keep him out of key, but I realize it isn't going to work, so I have to transition to other strategies, which is back to staying behind him. Now when he evades, uh, set up an attack chain that catches him off guard, and then yeah, that's pretty much the game plan, stay behind him. Uh, anticipate his back dashes and throw out real big pressure blaze. Here you can actually just, if you time it right, you can avoid all those attacks together. When he does his grab like this, as you can see I can get a near full Kuruma Sword Dance followed by Akasha. He does brutal combustion, I can fully get away with Kuruma Sword Dance. So you have a lot of time to really punish him if you are paying attention and avoiding his attacks. Staggering him in instances like this would be a mistake because you get a ton of free time anyway. And now, looky here, I am making sure to take advantage of as much pressure as possible. I'm able to re-inflict confusion again, which gives me a whole host of extra damage. I think I'm going to go for Itsumata here, I'm not sure if it works. Oh, it does a decent amount of damage. Maybe not as much as you may like, but I'm sure you can amplify that with a little bit of planning. I'm more comfortable using the sword personally, but I do realize that I'm using sword a little heavily, so I do believe I switched to Odachi. Yep, but here we go, we got the burst attacks. Counter it appropriately, Twin Moons is a very powerful move in general. Avoid the attack, stick behind him, and you will force him to reposition, which gives you opportunities to set things up. Here's another long animation attack, yet again from him, with a lot of recovery time. Uh, this was unfortunate that I got, uh, I got lightning on me and confusion, but I was like, alright, well, let's just go for a finisher, sort of Yokai Shift gameplay. And then here's that combo I was talking about, where I inflict Oh, I almost got Confusion off on there, but I used the Guardian Spirit Talisman to help me inflict Confusion, well, Lightning, and then I was trying to get Itsumade to help me inflict Confusion, and then here we go, I think here's a big boom play. So yeah, that was really satisfying to pull off. I think I just inflicted Corruption too much, and so I just couldn't reapply it. In any case, Otakimaru is now done, and I didn't have as much trouble provided I was paying attention to overall strategies. And yeah, and here's me just gl gloating, I can play my drum and all of that nonsense. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next time.